If you are a newbie and you want to have your first indoor plant or if you believe you have a gift to kill plants, these are the top 10 house plants for beginners that require minimum attention to grow. Hello everyone, I'm Zernita and this is Blissfully Random, a channel where we talk about everything practical and useful and today we have the top 10 easiest indoor plants and how to take care of them so they would thrive and bring you joy and zen. First you need to know that each and every plant needs two very basic things in order to photosynthesize and grow and these are light and water. If there is no light at your home there is no shame in getting an artificial plant and to have a real plant you should have at least low light conditions, which are simply defined by the amount of sunlight you would need in a room in order to read a book without sight difficulties. So let me show you my list of 10 beautiful living plants that are suitable even for beginners and don't require your constant attention. And the first one would be a Havortia. The specific type is Havortia fasciata, but the care guidelines apply to almost all the different Havortia varieties. They are almost foolproof indoor plants that would love being in a bright light and would love if you put them at the windowsill on an east or west facing window. If your window is facing south, they would appreciate being behind a sheer curtain to gently filter the sunlight. Here the other one we have is Havortia quail manurum. The proper watering for any plant is not just a splash of water every now and again, but it is to water them thoroughly until water comes out of the drainage holes. Sometimes, especially when the soil is very dry, you need to wait for about 10 minutes and then water again. Pour out what is not absorbed to prevent the pot sitting in water and the soil becoming soggy, which would cause root rot. For Havortias, after you water them right, forget about them for a week or two in the summer and up to six weeks in the winter, but that would greatly depend on the humidity and the pot that you have them in. The sure way to kill this plant is to overwater it as it may lead to root rot and the plant itself would become weak and sponge-like. To be sure that your plant is doing well, check the leaves. The plant should be compact in size, the leaves should be hard and supple. If the plant is too flexible and spongy, it may lack light or the root system may be not strong, so check it to see if there is root rot and, if need be, repot the plant. Second on our list today is aloe, similar in appearance to the Havortias. Again, aloes thrive in bright indirect sunlight or in direct light for several hours a day at an east or west facing window. Watering is the same as with the other succulents, water them well and they wait until the soil is dry to water again. Aloes grow very quickly and if you repot them regularly they will produce new leaves and pups but also their leaves will become wider with every pot size up. The differences between Havortias and aloes are in the teeth along the leaf margins. When you cannot see teeth you can try running your finger along the edge of the leaf. If you feel small rough spikes or teeth the plant is an aloe and if the leaf edge feels smooth the plant is most likely a Havortia. Third one would be a snake plant or Sansevieria, mother in law's tongue. I have a soft spot for Sansevierias and I'm always on the verge of buying one more, no matter that I already have five at home. It is a perfect plant for those who forget to water because of the special water storage systems in the roots called rhizomes. Sansevieria is a great plant that not only purifies the air, but it is also has an inverted cycle of oxygen production. While other plants produce oxygen during the day, snake plant does the opposite. It produces oxygen during the night, which makes it a perfect plant for your bedroom. The different varieties of Sansevieria require low to medium light and can tolerate the two sides of the spectrum very low light and very bright light as long as it is not direct as the leaves can get sunburn that is yellow brown and crunchy spots and leaves number four is spider plant chlorophytum commosum if we were to give a character description of every plant 
Spider plant would be a cheeky and enthusiastic indoor plant with several varieties. This one is probably the most common chlorophytum and this is an another one with a bit wider leaves. Spider plants purify the air as well and neutralize benzoyl, formaldehyde, carbon oxide and xylene. A great plus is that they are pet friendly. Chlorophytum loves bright indirect sunlight. Again, what is indirect sunlight? It is the shade of a bright window, a place where the sunlight does not directly shine on the plant's leaves or it can be behind a sheer curtain so the light would not scorch the plant and lead to sunburn. Water your spider plants thoroughly and after a couple of days check out the top layer of the soil and if it is dry, water again. The plant loves its soil to be evenly moist but not soggy. You can propagate a spider plant by division or by water propagating its little baskets and then transfer them to soil when they grow roots. Next would be Pothos, Epipremnum or Syndapsus. They say that it is almost impossible to kill this beautiful vining plant and I love how low maintenance it is. It grows fast and depending on the way you prune it, it might be with a luscious and full head or crown or more stringy. In the growing season, it produces a bunch of new leaves every week. It is low light tolerant but can thrive in a bright indirect sunlight where its variegations become much more pronounced. Water thoroughly and then forget about it until the soil dries out. It is very easy to propagate, cut out a string and then a centimeter on each side of a node. Put the nodes directly in soil and water liberally for the first time or water propagate and then transfer to soil. Zamiococcus zamifolia or zizi plant. During the isolation, this little guy was left behind in the office with virtually no watering and no light for the whole two months. And what did it do? It put up two new shootings. Like the potters, it is almost indestructible. It loves the soil to dry out between waterings because, like the snake plant, it has rhizomes. It tolerates very low light and it is absolutely first free to look after. Next is Spotifilum, Peace Lily, a beautiful plant that purifies the air but it is also able to communicate its needs. When a Peace Lily needs watering, it would wilt and about an hour after being watered, it would literally spring back to life. It grows rather quickly, producing a couple of new leaves every week during the growth season in spring and summer. And next is Hedera helix, English ivy. Yet again, another air purifying plant and I promise I do not purchase our plants depending solely on their quality to neutralize chemical fumes in the air. For this, an air purifier system is way better and the best choice, but the plants just give a little additional boost. Hedera is very easy to take care of, one undemanding plant that in some cases in parks and gardens is even considered an aggressive intruder that suffocates other plants growth. At home it will appreciate a terracotta pot and the soil getting dry between the waterings as well as bright indirect sunlight. As it is a trailing or vining plant itself, if you set up a pole or something to support it to grow upwards, the higher leaves will grow bigger than the ones closer to the pot. Comedoria, parlor palm. Comedorias require little to no special attention. They like it so moist but not soggy, so I water every day or every other day in the summer and the plant prefers bright indirect light. At home it is by a west facing window behind a sheer curtain and it grows steadily to eventually reach out a bit over one meter in height when it is fully grown. A glonema or Chinese evergreen. I fell in love with a really big and luscious glonema silver queen in a flower shop but we don't have the place to house it. So I adopted a heavily neglected plant of the same kind from a neighbor and a month later it says thank you by giving me two blooms. This here is a different variety, a Glonima Silver Queen Compacta. Again, as with any of the previously mentioned plants, it is an undemanding, minding its own business of growing new leaves every week and becoming 
a luscious plant as long as it gets medium to bright indirect sunlight and a good watering after the soil has been left to dry out. I hope you found this video helpful or entertaining and if so please give me a thumbs up, it will make me happy. Subscribe to the channel for more practical and useful videos on a variety of topics. It was a pleasure having you here today. I will see you again in my next video. Until then, stay happy and healthy. Bye!